Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Spencer Zimmerman of Janesville is a Republican candidate for Secretary of State. The primary is August 14th and the general election is November 6th. Spencer, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you for having me. I've been here for quite a few times now. Uh, yeah, we've, you've run for the State Assembly a few times. Yes. And now you're seeking statewide office. So tell me about the thought process that, uh, why Secretary of State? Sure. Well, uh, this is uh, actually my first time running for a statewide office and uh, my roots uh, in Wisconsin run deep. Uh, my uh, uh, great uncle actually uh, was uh, on the uh, uh, city council in uh, Fond du Lac back in the 60s and 70s. His uh, name was Conrad Zimmerman. Uh, I'm from the uh, Fond du Lac area originally. I was born in Nina. Uh, my family was from the Fond du Lac area. My uncle uh, ran for sheriff of Fond du Lac County back in 1986, and that's the first time I really got involved in politics. And I'm sorry, I apologize. I think my phone's ringing right now. I'm that's okay. You can take a minute and cut it off. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. There we go. Let me just make sure it doesn't ring again. Forgot to. That's all right. Uh, so you've had family members that have sought and held office. Yes. Right. Um, and now you have, you're transitioning to a statewide office. Um, why, do you, why did you decide on Secretary of State as opposed to Treasurer or running again for one of the seats in the Assembly? Sure. Well, it's, it's actually kind of a long story. Uh, I, uh, actually, I served in the Air Force. I joined the Air Force uh, back in 2000. I was actually on duty during the 9-11 terrorist attacks. I was part of a security response force, and uh, I was awarded the Joint Service Achievement Medal for my actions that day. And uh, I've always wanted to serve my country. It's why I joined the Air Force, and uh, that's why I'm, I'm running now and why I've, I've ran in the past. I continue to want to serve. I don't give up. I always uh, have wanted to serve my country, and I continue to, to fight for what I, what I believe in. One of those issues is term limits. And uh, I've, in several campaigns, that has been my number one priority, has, has been term limits. And the current incumbent, he was first elected uh, he, back in 1974. He began running for Secretary of State back when Richard Nixon was president. And I think that just like the president who serves two terms, eight years, I think all uh, people in public office should serve no longer than two terms or eight years. Term limits has been a, bit a very important issue for me. I've uh, continued to fight for it, uh, whether it's on a federal level or on a state level. I just think that uh, we should follow the precedent that was set by George Washington, our first president, when he uh, decided to not seek a third term. I think all people in, in public office should, should follow that same precedent that George Washington set uh, so long ago. Uh, so I believe in term limits. That's one of my number one issues. Uh, when I lived in Nebraska, I, I served in the Air Force. I was stationed at Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska. And back in 2003, uh, the Nebraska unicameral legislature passed legislati legislation making their Secretary of State Chief Protocol Officer for International Relations and to serve as a goodwill ambassador to other states and other countries uh, promoting uh, cultural exchanges, educational studies, and uh, uh, commerce between Nebraska and the rest of the world. I think we could pass similar legislation here in Wisconsin, uh, making our Secretary of State serve as a Chief Protocol Officer for International Relations and serve as a goodwill ambassador to other states and other countries uh, to try to promote commerce. Uh, and I've long supported uh, programs and projects that are going to bring jobs and opportunity here to Wisconsin. So I could continue to support those projects as a, a, an ambassador for the state uh, in, in that capacity. So I think that uh, that idea, it originated in Nebraska. I was living in Nebraska at the time when, when that legislation was passed. But I think we could pass similar legislation uh, adding relevance to the Secretary of State's office. International Ambassador, would it not duplicate some of the positions of the um, Wisconsin Economic Development Authority, which has a foreign desk and things like that? It, you don't see any duplication? I really don't see any duplication. I, I just th I think that uh, uh, we could we could pass legislation as they did back in Nebraska, and uh, we could add additional function to the office. Uh, you know, other other candidates are talking about trying to uh, uh, 
add uh, some election-related uh, function to the office, I would welcome that. Uh, but uh, you'd need the legislature to, to, you know, basically they've already uh, recently revised the the elections board, and uh, uh, they got rid of the government accountability board, and they divided it into the elections board and, and the uh, elections. Uh, uh, ethics Commission. I think that uh, you know this would be a way to create new function to the office uh, without you know reworking the wheel and, and trying to to uh, you know take function away from other departments. And at the same time, I, I would welcome a seat on the Elections Commission, uh, the six I believe it's a six member Elections Commission right yeah, now. Yeah, three and three. Yeah, I, I would welcome 3D. that. Uh, one of my background uh, was uh, in. Uh, information systems technology. My job in the Air Force was a computer system administrator. Uh, so I have a background in IT and uh, I served as a system administrator for, for uh, several years in the Air Force and uh, I think that I could bring that background in IT uh, to uh, elections as a cybersecurity uh, expert or, or to serve as uh, you know, cybersecurity uh, administration uh, uh, with, with relation to elections or any kind of cybersecurity, I, I have a background in, in IT and, and a degree in information systems technology. I think that I could really offer a lot to the state uh, with my, my uh, experience in uh, information systems technology. About 40 years ago, there were 50 full-time employees in the Secretary of State's office. It's now down to two as its old functions have been handed off to other state agencies. Do you think you could be a meaningful international ambassador with only two employees, you and an assistant or a, a, a deputy? Yes, I, I think that I, I could uh, do that without uh, increasing the budget. I'm a fiscal conservative, so if possible, I want to see uh, the taxpayer's dollar go as far as possible. And you know, I would, I would, uh, you know, see if, if there was any any uh, uh, increase. I, I would have to, you know be further, much further down the road as additional function or duties are added. Uh, obviously when uh, the Secretary of State administered elections back in the 1970s, that's, that, that's back when he had a, a staff of 50, uh, he had a five million dollar budget. Uh, I, I think that, you know, that time is, is passed, I mean in 19, I believe it was 1974 was when they actually created the elections board initially and, and took that function away from the Secretary of State's office. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, right now I'm completely comfortable with the budget where it's at and the number of staff where it's at. Uh, if I do need additional staff down the road as additional function is added to the office, I would consider that, but I'm a fiscal conservative so I, I don't take increases in the budget lightly. I w on, would only uh, increase it if it was absolutely necessary and it was uh, providing enough benefit to the taxpayers. And uh, if you're elected on November 6th, one of the first things you'd have to do is submit a proposed budget for the next two year spending cycle, 2019 through 21. Would you not ask for any new, new people? And would, would this, your vision of being an international ambassador, an international liaison, would that be the top way that you would you would change the office? Uh, I wouldn't be asking for any additional funding or any additional staff at this point. Uh, as as additional duties are, and responsibilities are added to the office, if the legislature, if I can get the sec the uh, uh, Senate and the Assembly to pass legislation making the Secretary of State officially the Chief Protocol Officer for International Relations, so he's serving as a uh, as a uh, uh, ambassador with uh, with portfolio, then at, at that point maybe additional, uh, you know, I have to look down the road and see if they do decide to make uh, the uh, uh, Secretary of State uh, have a uh, cybersecurity uh, oversight, uh, then I'd have to look at uh, where we are at that point. But uh, I do want to add additional function, but I also want to keep the budget where it's at. And um, if the legislature, the governor, were reluctant to do that, would just keep it with two people, basically, with the current functions. Do you think you, you'd be satisfied as a Secretary of State if, if, they, if they don't give you a chance to achieve your vision for the office? Well, I can still function as a goodwill ambassador to other states and other countries, even without the, uh, without the official you know, legislation being passed by uh, the, the legislature. It would be more of a ceremonial, it would be a, an ambassador without uh, portfolio, with uh, actual responsibilities and duties of the office not uh, uh, you know, signed officially, but you know, I could still function as a, uh, a goodwill ambassador, promoting commerce, promoting different projects, which I have long supported. You know, I, I 
ran several times, and, and I had mentioned different projects that I supported, uh, whether it's the Foxconn deal, uh, keeping Kimberly Clark uh, here in Wisconsin, or uh, the Enbridge Line 66 pipeline uh, that would have uh, uh, been a vital part of our energy infrastructure, uh, the uh, Great Lakes Basin Railroad project, which would have been the largest uh, privately funded railroad project in 100 years, uh, would have allowed uh, manufacturers in southern Wisconsin to bypass the Chicago freight yards, allowing uh, them to move product to market much quicker. Uh, some estimates put uh, as high as 250,000 jobs that 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 project, that $8 billion privately funded project would have created. I'm going to continue to be an advocate for those kind of projects. When I lived in Nebraska, I was a supporter of the Keystone Pipeline. And in, in showing my support, I, I created a Facebook page. It's got over 2,000 followers. Uh, I've got uh, hundreds of followers uh, for Build the Keystone Pipeline on, on Facebook. I, I support projects that are going to create jobs and opportunity uh, in Wisconsin. And I will continue to do that. And you know, I've already basically been serving as an ambassador uh, for those projects already, so I can continue to do that. And the the will of the voters will have proven that that I, I do have have some some uh, uh, clout as far as uh, being that ambassador and, and promoting those kind of projects. Four years ago, there was there was a discussion about eliminating both state treasurer and secretary of state. Now we voted. Uh, Wisconsin voters decided to keep the state treasurer's office. Um, so you still think the Secretary of State's office is, is valid and has uh, a, an opportunity to be an international liaison? Yes, it, absolutely. I think that uh, it's a, it, we can add, restore function to the office, make it relevant again. You know, the Secretary of State hasn't always been a weak uh, position here in Wisconsin. Uh, we, for decades, had, had uh, Secretary of States in the past that, that uh, were very effective uh, back when they had ac actual function, when they had actual duties. I just think that over the years, over the last you know, 44 years since Doug LaFollette first uh, ran for Secretary of State, I think the office has been, you know, there's been a lot of complacency. There's, uh, there's been a, an erosion of the actual function of the office. Uh, and I think that that's been a problem because of you know the fact that the incumbent's been in there for so long, and that's why I believe in term limits. I think that you know when you get someone in there, then, then they're reelected over and over again. You know it almost becomes like a like a game. You know it's like you know every, every, he crosses go every you know four years, and you know he collects his salary, and he and he lands on free parking, and and he you know stores his car in, in the Capitol parking garage for more than you know a half a decade. I mean he was he just goes on vacations every year. Uh, using funds, he's spent thirty-five thousand some dollars over over recent years uh, going on vacations from the uh, uh, the uh, land uh, um, funds uh, that were supposed to be used for for uh, schools. And yeah, the Secretary of State is a statutory member of the Board of Commissioners. Yeah, the of Board public of Commissioners lands. of Public Lands. Now that's a fairly significant responsibility, isn't it? To yes. be a part of how future resource how resources are distributed. Yes. Um, if a Democrat was elected governor, you're you're a Republican. Why would why would a Democratic governor listen to your vision for the office and maybe include it in her or his budget? Well, I think we can add a lot of function to the office, and and uh, with a with without um, you know without any function added to the office, people are going to continue to come back and say you know this this office is obsolete. It's a thing of the past. You know we need to get rid of it. But if we can add function to the office. You know, make it a 21st century cybersecurity uh, have some kind of role in in cybersecurity and technology today. Make it relevant again. Uh, you know, I have the background in cybersecurity, having served in the Air Force, having been a computer system administrator. You know, we recently heard about all the hacking that's been going on. You know, cybersecurity is a big issue, and, and I have a background where I, I think I could add a lot uh, to to uh, uh, protect our elections and. Recently, the Elections Commission uh, was requesting uh, five additional uh, full-time employees. One of them was going to be focusing on, on uh, election security. And uh, I don't know if they've uh, been able to actually uh, get that through. Uh, I believe it was uh, opposed. Uh, we could add a, a full-time election security position just by voting for me. Kay. I mean, I could, I could serve as, as a... Um, uh, protector of, of our elections. You know, I have a background in information systems technology, uh, web page design. Uh, I served in the Air Force, was a system administrator for four years on secure networks. I know how a secure network is set up. I know what it takes to secure a network. Our ne networks, you know, I was working for the uh, Strategic Air Command off at Air Force Base for four years 
uh, working in computers, that's how you protect a network. And we need to protect our elections uh, the same way, not just our elections, though. Cybersecurity is such a large, uh, you know, there's so many different computer systems. For instance, the Russians recently hacked uh, the uh, uh, Department of Workforce De Development. It was revealed, initially they thought that they had hacked our, our uh, elections. Uh, elections uh, yes. Uh, and uh, we actually found out that the IP address that was actually hacked was Department of Workforce Development. You know, that doesn't mean they weren't trying to seek information out on candidates or, you know, find some information that they could use uh, for, for some kind of purpose to affect our elections. Right. So, I mean, Kay. cybersecurity is such a large, broad area. You know, we, we need to protect our grid, we need to protect our power plants, uh, all of, our, all of our, our nuclear power plants, uh, c computer systems, financial banking. You know, we, right now we face 2.4 million attacks every day uh, from uh, hackers, hackers, potential hackers, 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 potential hackers. Yeah. and uh, by 2021, this is uh, estimated to be a, a, a problem costing worldwide six trillion dollars a Kay. year uh, worldwide. So We're almost out of time. Now, you've outlined your concerns, why you think you'd be a better Secretary of State than Mr. LaFollette, but you've got a primary, right? Yeah. Take, take a few seconds, and why are you more qualified than your primary opponent? Well, I mean, he is issued a press release uh, initially, uh, where he called for uh, re remove, he wanted to remove the Secretary of State position from Wisconsin. He wanted to abolish the Secretary of State position. And, you know, I just think um, if you're coming at it from that point of view and you just want to abolish the office, I, I think that, uh, you know, that's just the wrong route. You know, I think that the voters rejected that with the treasurer's position, and mm -hmm. that position serves even less function. Now, that only has one full time employee. Uh, the Secretary of State has two. Two. And there's actually more function to the Secretary of State's office. So if they rejected abolishing the Treasurer's position, and, you know, my par primary opponent wants to abolish the Secretary of State's position, you know, they already held a referendum. That failed. Okay. Uh, and uh, just go going back to the my opponent, uh, Doug LaFollette, uh, I have a book here that Quickly, he Quickly, we're almost out of time. Uh, he wrote this, uh, and uh, just to look at some of the uh, completely unbelievable ideas that Doug LaFollette has, now, basically, he wants to see uh, uh, the gasoline tax increased. Uh, he thinks people should uh, not buy a new car. But they should walk, ride a bus, carpool. And this is just Can page I just 11 ask of his book. How long ago he, he wrote that? Uh, he wrote this uh, in the early 1970s. I understand. Uh, okay. I think we better leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, Thank I you. I mean, I, I, I want to support, uh, you know, obviously the automobile industry is a big industry. I mean, at the time, back in the early 1970s, we had a GM plant in Janesville. We had a Chrysler plant. It was American Motors, actually, back then in, in the early 1970s when Doug LaFollette wrote that. When he tells people to not buy a new car, think of how damaging that is to the economy. When he tells, uh, this is the Secretary of State of Wisconsin urging people to walk, ride a bus, find some other way to get around, and not drive. I mean... But just c come back. Those were his positions from the 1970s. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Spencer Zimmerman of Janesville is a Republican candidate for Secretary of State. The primary is August 14th, the general election November 6th. Spencer, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. Thank you. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by... Wisconsin Hospital Association. Wisconsin Counties Association. Wisconsin Realtors Association. Marshfield Clinic Health System. And Campaign 2018 partner, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.